Hey you, yes you, how well do you know yourself? What you'll probably answer is not at all, I'm having an existential crisis, why do I exist? Just kidding, you probably know yourself very well. But the thing is, your body does a lot of things and has some hidden features, kind of like Easter eggs that you never knew of. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what all of those things are. <laughs> Here are 10 things you don't know about you. Number 10 is you're kind of blind. Your eyes are amazing things, often considered the windows to the soul or mind. Well, those windows might need a little glass cleaner, as there's a smudge on them that's blocking your vision. More specifically, each of your eyes has a blind spot. In order to allow us to see, each of our eyes take in light through the pupil and bounces it off the retina behind it. But our optic nerves end at the retinas, creating a shadow as it blocks the light itself, and thus a blind spot. But luckily, Luckily, when seeing with two eyes, we can negate the missing image, so you may never have even realized that there was an issue at all. Even when using one eye or when the blind spots happen to omit the same thing, our brains are able to ascertain what must be in the blind spot and fills it in accordingly. Pretty cool, right? Number 9 are changing eyes. Whether they're blue, brown, hazel, or green, your eyes weren't always the color that they are now. This is especially true if you have fairer skin, as the change is much more apparent. Almost all Caucasian babies are born with light blue eyes, even those with brown or even hazel ones now. Your eyes might still be blue, but it's more than likely that the specific shade that they are today is not the color that they were at birth. Melanin is a pigment that determines how dark your skin and hair and, of course, your eye color is. You weren't born with all the melanin you would eventually possess, which means your eye color didn't fully develop until you were exposed to the world and began absorbing the pigment. Kind of like how a blonde baby's hair gradually darkens, so do their eyes. Fun fact, I was actually born with blonde hair, and more hair than I have now, so... Some things kind of go backwards, I guess. Number eight is when you were first formed. The next time someone calls you a butthead or an a-hole, let it go. Literally because they simply don't understand how right they are. Before you were the person you are today or even brought into this world, you were a fetus inside a woman that you probably call your mom. But as you formed and those cells divided to create you, it wasn't your kind heart or sweet biceps that formed first, it was actually your butt. Like many other living creatures, after a human woman's egg is fertilized by a sperm, it begins dividing into multiple cells, forming something called called a blastula, which forms its own hole called a blastopore. That hole develops and expands, eventually becoming your butthole. Gross, I know. Well, the rest of you basically develops around and from this blastula, meaning that you're a butt. No offense. Hey John, you're a butthole. Yes, yes, I used to be, but I grew up from that. Very good, you know your science. What? Number seven is you've got stripes. In the early 1900s, Alfred Blaschko, a German dermatologist, discovered that a number of the conditions his patients developed, such as rashes, seemed to follow particular paths across their bodies. Paths that were confusing as they didn't match up with blood flow or nerves. A century later, we now understand Blaschko's lines a little better, and the surprising truth is you've got stripes. Yes, that's right, like a zebra, but not as pronounced. There's a pattern of markings covering covering your entire body, like your own personal camouflage, or at least it would be if the lines weren't invisible. If you're like almost every other living person, your stripes can only be seen under an ultraviolet light. The lines are the result of several different skin cells dividing and stretching to cover your expanding body, winding around one another and leaving the lines. That's right, you're part zebra! And although that's a joke, I'm sure there are some people out there that actually identify as a zebra. It's almost 2019. Number six is Chimp Harry. 
Obviously, as humans, we're hairy creatures, no matter how much we want to shave or wax. But when compared to other primates, such as chimpanzees, we're far less hairy, right? Well, hold on to your combs, because as it happens, we give those apes a run for their money. Research shows that both humans and chimps have around 5 million hair follicles on their individual bodies. The only reason chimps appear to be hairier than us is because theirs is much thicker, a requirement to help keep them warm as they usually don't have the means of heating themselves. But of course, human beings lost their fur-like covering through evolution. But our hair is much finer and lighter than the dark, thick strands on a chimp's body. Still, when it comes to the number of hairs on your body, you're basically a chimpanzee. <laughs> number five is you glow. You're more like a firefly than you thought. Though you can't see it when you look in the mirror or even in the dark, you're actually glowing. Scientists in Japan discovered that not only do humans emit light, but that the amount is likely linked to our internal body clocks, rising and falling as the day goes on. In fact, pretty much every living creature gives off some light. It's just that unlike glowworms, fireflies, and certain jellyfish, the levels of light that we as humans are emitting is actually around 1,000 times less intense than what our naked eyes are sensitive to. Thus, we can't see it without special equipment. And our faces give off the most light, possibly due to being exposed to more light than the rest of our bodies. Just imagine how much you'd save in light bulbs if you could just read a book with your glow of your face. Number four is a stomach brain. Have you ever judged someone that you just met on a feeling in your heart or been faced with a decision and found that it was your gut that helped you make it? Well, that could have been evidence of the link that exists between your gut and your brain, a connection made up of hundreds of millions of neurons that allow chemicals and hormones to make their way back and forth to let us know that we're hungry, nervous, sick, or even in love. Though it's always in regular contact, the entric nervous system monitors your entire digestive tract, including local blood flow, and can act without input from a central nervous system. This is what earns it the nickname Second Brain. So having a gut feeling isn't just a figure of speech, and those butterflies in your stomach might just be butterflies in your second brain. Now this is a fun fact, but if someone asks you, why do you love me? Don't be weird about it and say, my stomach said so. <laughs> They're gonna think you're Hannibal Lecter and tip out the door. <laughs> Number three is you're forever becoming a new person. Like an efficient factory, the human body is constantly working, taking in certain stuff and outputting other stuff, while replacing parts that become used up in the process. But believe it or not, the rate at which those replacements occur is so vast and complete, you're literally not the same person you used to be. That's because within every 7 to 10 years, every cell in your body has been replaced, at least once, by a clone of the previous version. Think of it like a decade-long upgrade to your system, though you likely won't notice. Some parts like red blood cells replicate themselves every four months, while your skin is renewed every one to two weeks. Our bones take longer than most of the other parts, taking as long as 10 years to completely change. So literally every decade you're a new you. Use that if someone ticks you off. Hey baby, I'm a whole new man. My bones are different. Number two is more bacteria than person. If you ever find yourself wondering how bacteria always seems to be everywhere and on everything, it might be wise to remember that you're never far away from it, as you're basically walking bacteria. That's right, mixed in with all those other particles that make up your body, the human cells, if you will, are a huge number of bacterial cells, and the human ones are outnumbered. For a long time, people believed that there were more bacteria than human cells inside of us, at a rate of 10 to 1. But in January of 2016, researchers in Israel and Canada revealed that while the number of bacteria is still higher, it's around 39 trillion to the 30 trillion human cells that the average person has inside them. That's closer to a ratio of 1 to 1. But if you think about it, that's a lot of bacteria that you're carrying around with you. You're probably carrying around like a pound of bacteria. <laughs> okay, gotta move on, that's gross. And number one, you're made up of stardust. 
Growing up, it's likely that your parents or teachers were always telling you that you were a star. Well, as it turns out, they didn't know just how right they actually were. You, me, and pretty much everything all around us is literally made up of stardust, or more specifically, elements made from stars. Nuclear fission occurring within the massive balls of light takes in helium and gives birth to elements such as carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and iron, in addition to others, which are many of your body's building blocks. This process is called nucleosynthesis. When stars go supernova, they send their particles in every direction, and the heavier elements clump together via gravity to form planets such as Earth. As life evolved on this planet, it did so using the carbon and other elements from those stars. So literally, you're a star, baby! Congratulations. Here's a fake award. You're still a star, though. <laughs>